Welcome in, everyone, on a Tuesday. What is up? Welcome back to Red Cedar Radar, the Michigan State Spartans podcast with rivals. Sponsored, of course, by Nudge Printing. Go to nudgeprinting.com and find all of your quality Michigan State apparel. Sydney, welcome to the show. How the heck are you? We have lots planned today. We do. Lots to talk about. I'm doing well. How are you? Great, great. So um, I'm taking a film class right now, right? Okay. And we've we've started by watching pretty much the most boring movies you could think of. Actually, it's not that boring. I say that it's like, you know, it, it they're not that boring. Okay, so like we watched Casablanca, we watched all the old movies, like we're watching another movie this year for this that this one actually has sound and it's in color. So we have that going for it. Anyway, so I have taken it upon myself uh, to to sort of watch more movies myself, right? Okay. And so I don't know if you know this about me, but I am the biggest uh, racing fan mm-hmm. and I say this because and I say this with one caveat because I used to love NASCAR. Now I hate NASCAR. So I want I want everyone everyone needs to know that about me because <laughs> like I just I cringe sometimes at what NASCAR has become. You know, not that it I'm sometimes I'm embarrassed for myself. So NASCAR fans come for him in the comments, please. Right. Please do. <laughs> Uh, but so I watch a lot of formula one racing. I'm a big advocate of watching, uh, there's a few like women, uh, racing, um, events that I'll watch. And two also, um, formula E, which is like, uh, basically, um, uh, like electric formula one, which is interesting, an interesting side note. And we're not, this is again, not a formula one podcast, but it's interesting (laughs) because formula one doesn't have the rights until, uh, of electric cars until 2039. Which is interesting because a lot of states are banning electric cars and Formula One's supposed to be like this whole thing where like they are building the cars of the future, right? Like you'll see the technology in a Formula One car and then several years later you'll get it in your consumer vehicle. So that's like that's kind of the cool thing about Formula One is it's like a science fair for cars, right? So it's it's great. Anyway. Um, that was just a context to, to, to preface what I, what I really want to get into real quick, uh, before we start talking about Michigan state, because Mm -hmm. Michigan state's news has been, has been somewhat dreary lately, especially since I've been following the hockey team. So I really wanted to preface with something a little (laughs) more sad to fit the mood, right? (laughs) Okay. So the mood. Yeah. So yes. So there is this, there's this movie and I don't, and I just started watching it and I am already convinced that it is probably my favorite movie that I've ever seen. And wow. also, I know this is in high regard, right? So also, I think it is the saddest movie that I've ever watched in my mm. entire life. It is sadder than any Michigan State game you'll ever watch. <laughs> so, or the sad, you know, the saddest ones, right? Yeah. So it's, it's titled The Art of Racing in the Rain based on a book, right? Okay. In, in a novel that came out in 2008. Okay. It settled the art of racing in the rain. The novel was originally by Garth Stein. Okay. Mm-hmm. So the, the movie stars Milo Ventimiglia and Amanda Seyfried. Okay. Um, and so it also has Kevin Costner in it as the voice mm-hmm. of the dog. So the, it's about a dog and his owner, right? Mm-hmm. So the, the dog mm-hmm. is narrating the whole movie. Okay. I like that. I love it. Anything mm-hmm. about a dog is 100% great, right? Yeah, but then I always get nervous that the dog's going to die. The dog does die, but God. that's not okay. the point of the Spoiler movie. Spoiler alert, is, first but, of all. But, but well, the, do- the whole point of the movie is the dog's life. Like, the whole, okay. that's the whole point of the movie. So it's, okay. not like, it's not like Marley and me, right? Like, yeah. it's not like uh. that level of sad where the dog mm-hmm. just dies at the end and you're just like, don't know what to do with your emotions. Mm-hmm. But... So this, there's this dog. It starts with this dog named Enzo who has hip dysplasia at the end, right? So um, the, that's where it starts. Like, it's one of those movies where it starts. You already know sort of the ending and where yeah. how to get there is, is the point, is the plot, yeah, yeah. right? So the, the, it's a golden retriever, mm-hmm. and um, 
so it's about this this uh, this this dog named Enzo after Enzo Ferrari and his owner who is a race car driver. Okay, and so it's it's a basically about his life and the dog believes in this legend that if you live a lot your life as a dog and you are prepared as a dog, then you will be reincarnated as a um, as a human, right? Okay. Okay. And so that's the whole point. That's like the whole plot of the movie is that this dog is trying to prepare himself for his <laughs> human life and being the best human, right? Okay. okay. And I started, I'm not going to lie, I started crying 10 minutes in <laughs> and I just <sighs> did not stop at all, right? So, um, and again, I don't want to spoil, no spoilers, right? No spoilers, no spoilers except for to this, everything else right? that you just I know. said, but whatever. Right, well, well, that's, but you have to know what the movie's about, right? So, so he <laughs> uses, uh, he uses, um, like, there's this point where the, uh, the dog actually helps him get custody of his daughter, right? Mm-hmm. Like, that's a, that's a major point in the movie, and at one point there's a quote like honestly there's i mean there's a lot of quotes like i don't think that anything has really spoken to me like a movie adaptation about a book about a, a well a movie coming from a book more than looking for alaska and this is on that level okay. right like looking for alaska mm-hmm. was was a mm-hmm. novel masterpiece and this is just great like there is there's a point where he says there's no, there's no dishonor in losing the race. There's only dishonor in not racing because you're afraid to lose. And that is a quote of a lifetime. Yeah, genuinely. quote to live by. Mm-hmm. Quote to live by. But again, it's about a dog, and he lives he lives through his life. And again, it just 100%, 10 out of 10, recommend. Like, I had okay. to start the podcast with that. Watch it. Give us your, you know, review in the comments. It's on, again, it's on Disney+. Plus. So mm-hmm. you have to you have to see it. I promise. Okay. Well, you have to see it. If I have time. No, you, soon. no, you will make time. <laughs> yeah, mean, we'll see. We'll will, see. You will make time to watch this movie. Uh, but again, I like it came out in 2019, and I'm surprised that I missed it. But hmm. um, anyway, so we are here to talk about Michigan State sports because yes, that's what we, we do are. on a Michigan State sports <laughs> podcast. Uh, Sydney, what has been going on? Michigan State lost to Purdue. Mm-hmm. I'm going to start alert. this off with a complete hot take Ooh. that I feel like isn't actually a hot take, but I don't know. We'll see. I don't think Zach Eady is that good. He's all just seven game. foot feet yeah. tall. <clears throat> hold on. Hold on. Let me, let me do my thing here. Yeah. Okay. All game long. The announcers, oh, he's so good, he's so smart, he plays so well, and I'm vomiting because it's like, no, he's he doesn't have good awareness. I feel like he doesn't have a high IQ of the game. He's just seven foot four, and when your eyelashes are touching the rim of the basket, you can easily put it in there. If I was seven foot four, John yeah. Mulaney <laughs> is like seven foot four. He could do he could do what Zach Eady's doing. Yeah, I just I just feel like although Matt Painter I think he has developed from last season, so like props mm-hmm. to him for that, I guess. But I just don't think he started playing basketball like five years ago. He's Zach not Eady? gonna have yeah, he's not gonna have the IQ of someone that's been playing AAU since they were young. I'm just I just think the high praise of him being so intelligent and such a good such a, you know, great you know addition to the Purdue team of course he's a great addition to the Purdue team because no one can stop him because he's so huge right and that's how I feel yeah it's pretty tough to stop a guy that's seven foot four and it's like it's it's funny because he's not that mobile like he's not doing that much no no well he's like I don't know it's like playing against a skyscraper right and like uh, I was shocked. I was shocked that he got the two fouls that he got on us at the end of that game. Because how how had how last time that we played them did he not get a single foul? Because he I don't think he has great control over his body or his limbs. Like he's just massive. 
I'm just always surprised that he doesn't get more fouls because of that fact. Yeah, I think that the when they played when Michigan State played Purdue back at Breslin, when mm-hmm. that Mati Sissoko play was absolutely criminal. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's terrible. Like yeah. I mean, you you wrap a guy around like that, and you call, and that yeah. was a foul on Sissoko. Are you yeah. kidding me? Yeah. Like I was okay. A, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Full disclosure. I am not a basketball rules expert. Hell, mm. I'm not a hockey rules expert. You want to put me in as a referee? I'm not going to do so hot. Yeah, I'm not right. going to lie, right? But, like, I know that that is a foul. Yeah, yeah. And I kept watching the replay on Twitter, and it was like, how obvious How obvious does it need to be? And he's also a massive person, so it's not like right. you couldn't see it happening because he's so well, big in front of you. That's like, like, I don't that's know. like when they say that, that like, yellow hummers always get like the most tickets because oh, yeah, they're so, you, it's so, you can't yeah. miss them right like the police yeah. are just gonna notice them but yeah. like with Edie it's so like it's so I don't know I yeah no, I just that, don't understand I feel the same and like he's so massive and like there's it's like that I keep thinking back to that Sissoko play it's not mm-hmm. like anyone else like it can do anything about it you know what I mean? Like, like yeah. Sissoko literally had zero control of yeah. that situation. Yeah. You know, like he went up to to try to block the ball, and mm-hmm. Edie just like tore him around like he's you know a yeah, child, like a rag doll. Yeah, right. Literally. Yeah, yeah. There was a play <clears throat> in this most recent Purdue game where Carson Cooper was out on the court, literally like fight. Like I I was the one tweeting during the game, and I was he was literally like fighting for his life against Edie and he ended up getting a steal and it was like throughout like all of Edie's limbs and his body like flailing Carson Cooper around he just like ended up with the ball somehow and he like even seemed shocked himself that he ended like catch like caught the ball and he didn't even know what to do with it but it was literally like Carson Cooper's not a small guy he's small he's skinnier because he's young but like just to watch him being thrown around like that it, it was just like what are you gonna do there's nothing you can do you just kind of have ask, to take it let me ask you a question who do you think is the or not not who so, well i guess who okay mm-hmm. who do you think is the most annoying college basketball team <laughs> most annoying i think it's purdue like genuinely <laughs> not even joking 100 percent like Purdue yeah. thinks they're all this shit, right? <laughs> and they won. They haven't won an NCAA tournament ever. They have mm-hmm. one national championship banner, mm-hmm. one, and it was in 1932. Did you see that tweet of that person? Yeah, where they got like, four oh, you're banners. A, you're a poverty program about Michigan State, and then the guy tweeted back, and it was like all of our banners, and then their four banners hanging on yeah. the wall. Yeah, just go to Purdue's I, Wikipedia. You got all you need to know. When MSU played at Purdue against UCLA, my friends and I went down there. And we're standing outside waiting in line to get in. And there's, like, a couple UCLA fans. But, like, you know, majority Michigan State fans because it's so so much closer to us than it is UCLA. There's some Purdue fans that, of course, you can get tickets. You're a student there, you know, because there isn't going to be – it's not going to fill up because UCLA fans aren't going to come in droves to, you know, Purdue. But there's some – Purdue students that are standing in line behind us. It's me and two other girl, like college age girls in our Michigan State gear, like standing outside. Sorry, that was my email. If you heard that, um, and we're just like standing there, and everyone's just waiting in line to get in. Like nothing's happening, and all of a sudden, these like college age Purdue boys behind us start yelling at us, like about Larry Nasser and stuff like that, and like chanting oh, that so in our awful. faces. And we were like. Like, what do you even do in that situation when it's, like, 16 college-age boys and you three college-age girls just standing there, like, waiting? And you can't even get away from them because you're waiting in line. So it was disgusting, and I was not impressed. Um, so no, I don't know if I don't know if that's necessarily the – they're the most annoying team, but I will always come back to that, and I think that's disgusting behavior. No, it- um, and it is because it's well because it's disrespectful to the to the victims of absolutely. Nasser, right? Yeah, right. You, you know, right. like it's not a joke to just be Nasser was around. already held accountable for his actions, right? right at Michigan that point, State yeah. already paid the consequences 
four and people were very very critical of msu mm -hmm. you know what i mean like you want to talk about a program where it's behavior like that may be may be appropriate or tolerable look at michigan you know what I mean? Like they have that, you know, they had a guy who allowed, you know, a bunch of people, Dr. Anderson to assault number of victims, a thousand I just of feel them. Like, I just feel like obviously they're college age boys, so maybe they don't know better, but you should know better to not do that in any sense. And so you saying like they're the most annoying team. Yeah. I just hold a grudge against them because of that, because it was just such a icky, terrible experience. And yeah. I, yeah, it was terrible. But as far as, like, a most annoying team, I don't know. I do know that um, – I mean, I just, get anno I just get annoyed by, by Purdue but because of Edie. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Well, and I, I was like – I wish that there – when I would watch a basketball game, I wish there was an option where I couldn't – didn't have to listen to the announcers, but I could still listen to, like, the court noises and, like, the crowd. Oh, because be I always get irrationally mad at the announcers being like, oh, my gosh, Purdue – Matt Painter so good. And I'm like, shut up, please. I need to hear anything else other than Zach Eady, player of the year. Bam, 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 bam. I'm like, shut up for five seconds and let me just watch the game. So – that was driving me off the wall. Do you think they'll go into the tournament and win it all? Purdue. Purdue? Oh, absolutely not. You want, yeah, I, like, yeah, like I, I, I mean, they. I don't think they make the Elite Eight. Like, I don't even think they make the, the maybe the mm -hmm. Sweet 16. I mean, because, like, here's the thing, okay? Like, look at look at the, the, the number of, of Big Ten winners in the NCAA tournament in the last 20 years. How many? Zero. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, Michigan State was the last one in 2000. Mm -hmm. OK, if the Big Ten wants to win a tournament, come find me. Do it. You know what I mean? Like, it's like I, I, you just haven't. Right. So like I just next year for us with that recruiting class coming in and some of the. Yeah, I mean, again, I'll have. believe it when I see it like that would be great. That would be cool. Mm -hmm. Right. Like. Like you I and think... I standing courtside with our microphones after the game. <laughs> Everyone, welcome back to Red Cedar Radar National Championship Edition. Yeah. No, I mean, that would be cool. I think that right now, <laughs> and maybe this is just me, right? Like, mm -hmm. I, like, basketball is such a weird sport for me because I just don't care that much about the overarching things that people care about all the like like people care so much about michigan state in the sense that they're like i can't stand this team i can't stand watching them you know yada 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 and i'm like yeah but like at the same time i mean look at the recruiting class you have coming in it looks mm -hmm. great right like mm -hmm. they could make a run and michigan state could still make a run i mean you got yeah. no michigan no other team has the amount of the the bet no other team has as good of a coach as Izzo is in terms yeah. of like, I mean, maybe a couple, a couple teams, right? Like you got, I mean, you got some good coaches out there, but like Izzo is among the best, arguably yeah. the best in the big 10 at, mm -hmm. you know, no, uh, March runs. So like I have zero concerns right now yeah. about, about Michigan state just a, in a program as a whole, just because mm -hmm. This team is so like I think that Michigan State has it good, right? Like you look at if you look at bat, I mean football. What does Michigan State have there, right? Where is that program at, right? Like, what you your basketball program could be there, and you'd have nothing. You know what I, you know what I mean? Like there wouldn't yes, be yes. enough as much to be excited about. So mm -hmm. I think that Michigan State has the privilege of having a basketball teams that can come in recruit and you you know like this is a mm -hmm. destination place for a lot of recruits oh, whereas absolutely. in football michigan has a huge recruiting advantage yeah so yeah speaking of michigan um i was just i was reading something um i'm not sure who said it but i was reading it uh do you think michigan will make the NCAA tournament at this point. Oh my God. I, I'm not the person to ask. I'm not going to lie because I have zero concept on how bracketology actually works, but yeah, and there's always a little politics in there, but I feel like 
where they are now, they have to have a they have to have a big Big Ten tournament to make it. Yeah, I mean, I would have. They have to win it. They yeah. like don't look good. Like they don't even look like they could compete with like anybody. I right? do want to say I feel like this season since Hunter Dickinson has been so active on that podcast and on Twitter and stuff, mm. I feel like them being mediocre or below mediocre is just a mm. consequence of his actions a little bit. If you're going to come online and talk crap and act that way, then your team might play like crap because that's a little bit of karma. I don't know. But yeah. just my two cents on that one. Um, So if you do want to know what the experts are thinking, Okay, okay. I did I did it I did, I don't know if you've if you've looked at ESPN's bracketology recently. I have not. There's Mm-mm. one that came out this week, okay? Oh. Okay. And um I'm just I'm not going to give you a huge rundown, okay? Here is where it has the bubble teams, okay? So okay. you got the last four uh buys, you have Boise State, Maryland, Memphis and West Virginia. The last four in okay. are Pittsburgh, Penn State, Kentucky and Oklahoma. So okay. Kentucky is a last four in team, right? Just and just to mm-hmm. give you an idea, if you want to compare that to Michigan, look at what Penn State's doing. They mm-hmm. they just kick their ass, and yeah. they are uh, a last yeah. four in team, okay? Mm-hmm. And then you have first four out. You got Texas A&M, Nevada, Oklahoma State, and Wisconsin. And then the next four out is Arizona State, Ohio State, Satan, Seton Hall, and Utah State. Michigan State. Uh, Mm -hmm. is currently a seven seed in the West bracket. Again, this is all speculation to ESPN, right? But they have Michigan State as a seven seed in the um, the West uh, bracket. Mm -hmm. Um, In that same bracket, Houston would be number one. Uh, They would play Boise State, who would be a 10 seed. Mm -hmm. And the, the four number one seeds would be uh, Alabama as an automatic qualifier, and then Houston, mm-hmm. uh, Tennessee, and Purdue. Okay. So, uh, like I said, um, Michigan, yeah, the chances don't look great. Yeah, I know. Especially, I mean, especially, like, I don't even think it's a chance. Like, I would, if they want to, uh, if they want to win, or I'm sorry, if they want to get in, to Mm -hmm. the uh tournament you know what they need to do win every single game now (laughs) till the end right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then win the big 10 tournament yeah yeah i mean they gotta go on a hell of a run or win the big 10 tournament right okay i just want to circle back to the purdue game one more time and then we'll move on to hockey maybe let's go on so it would have been a nice a beautiful win on the road for Michigan State. A little more breathing room as far as, like, Big Ten tournament and things coming up in March. But they have Rutgers, Maryland, Ohio State, and Minnesota. Right. I think with a couple home games mixed in there, I mean, two away, two home. I think those are important games that MSU shows up for, especially Ohio State because they are really struggling. Um, and I think the two at home, Maryland and Minnesota, those should be wins at home to kind of lift spirits again and head into the Michigan game with confidence because Michigan is also a must win. Um, at, that would, you know, that would be Arbor. huge. And I think it's completely possible that Michigan with how, State beats Michigan. I think if, if Michigan State goes on a, like, you know, these next four games puts on strong performances, maybe dare I say a four game win streak. That'd be beautiful. <laughs> and heads into Ann Arbor. I think it's an absolute, like absolute easy win game. Not easy, you know. I don't mm-hmm. want to say easy. An absolute, you know, possibly one game. I don't know how to say that without like putting bad juju out there. But right. um, so that's what's coming ahead. Anything? Any opinions about the games coming? ahead coming next no i i mean just like i said i think that a win in 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 ann arbor at the chrysler mm-hmm. center mm-hmm. that would be that would be chef's Beautiful. kiss yeah, like that definitely. would be insane for this team mm-hmm. yeah i agree switching 
topics really quick to women's basketball, and then we'll get to hockey because yeah. I know that you have lots to say about hockey, and I have lots to, lots of questions for you or a couple questions for you about that. But so women's basketball takes on Nebraska on February second, so that's Thursday, right? And then they are back at home against Michigan on Sunday, so that'll be a good game. Michigan is currently ranked 18th. MSU is unranked, so a win would be you know, beautiful thing. But something I wanted to highlight was on Sunday and at the game against Michigan, Michigan State is celebrating National Girls and Women in Sports Day, which is something that I um, hold near and dear to my heart. I have an article coming out about that tomorrow or on Wednesday, um, February 1st which is um, National Girls and Women in Sports Day. So I just think it's an important day to highlight, and I wanted to be the one to kind of bring that up and write a little article about it because it's something important to me. And it will be I'll be at the game on Sunday um, for the women's basketball team to kind of celebrate that. So I just wanted to put that little plug in there about my article and about that game on Sunday. Are you covering the game or are you just going? I'm covering. Covering yep. it? That's cool. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, right. that will actually be my first women's basketball game covered. So that's no, that's cool. I've been I've been meaning to ask to get to to get to some. It's just been mm-hmm. with the with the hockey schedule and everything. It's just been oh yeah, so yeah. chaotic, you know. But well, I'm excited. So hopefully there'll be more from me after that game. Maybe yeah. a Michigan State women's basketball upset of Michigan, which would be beautiful. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. Yeah. Okay, do you Brad, want let's... to switch? So we're switching gears to hockey now. Yes, which is sir. Great. Let's do and, it. You know. Your hockey recruiting uh, analyst, of course. Um, so basically, before so Mi- Michigan State just played Minnesota, right? Mm-hmm. So they just played Minnesota off of a bye week. They got swept. Okay. Yeah. Now, for context, Michigan uh, Minnesota is the uh, number. I mean, they're arguably the number one team in the country. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, best team in the in the in the Big Ten for sure, mm-hmm. hands down. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. So this is this is where it gets tricky, right? So a lot of people have argued with me or debated with me and said mm-hmm. that Michigan State's losses or to Minnesota, I mean they lost four times to Minnesota this year, were embarrassing. And there's it's a little bit more complicated than that because okay. I am 100% the first person to be very critical of Michigan State. Yeah, but right. Here's the thing. Give them a break. Because okay. I love here's it. the because here's the deal. I mean, Michigan State is 13, 13 and two. They got mm-hmm. they play Notre Dame this weekend and Notre Dame is not that great. Right. Okay. I mean, they they're they're OK. Right. But they're, they're not that like, you know, they're not like they they're were in Minnesota. the last few years. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And I mean, they're not even like Ohio State, like Ohio State's like up there. Right. Like they're not mm-hmm. even them. Mm-hmm. And so, again, they just played Minnesota. It's, I, it's to, to me, it's not fair to criticize Michigan State for four losses to the best team in the country. Like, a win would have been great, right? It yeah. would have been great. But, again, it's the best team in the country. It's like, and, and, and I use this, this uh, comparison, and, and people will say that it's wrong or whatever, but I disagree. Because it kind of is. The only difference is the sports are different. But in Michigan, if Michigan State football, imagine if they got to take on Georgia, but you give Georgia four NFL players. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like Minnesota, the, 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 the incredible thing about college hockey is that it is such a hard sport to play. And by hard sport, I mean that development literally takes years. Yeah. Like, if you so in so just to give you again another idea in college hockey development takes so long there are very few players who are under 21 who are very very good right Mm -hmm. so like you know like players can if they if they want to if they haven't developed enough they can play junior hockey until they're 21 years old Mm -hmm. whereas in other sports i mean you have like some 21, 21 years. I mean, how old was LeBron James when he went to the NBA? He was like 19. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Or like, um, like in, in the NFL, like, uh, I don't know, like Tom Brady was like 23 when he won his first Super Bowl. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Just, just stuff like that. Whereas like in hockey, like most of the players that reach their 
biggest success in hockey is like 20, 23, 24, 25. And then they are like, they just have so much, they're never perfect. You know what I mean? Like it's such a, you have to play with people who are so much more skilled than you. You Mm -hmm. have to, it's a, such a physical and taxing game that, I mean, that's, what's always impressed me about the sport is that just so much, like if I'm, if I'm thinking about the physicality and, and nature of the sport, I think that hockey is arguably the hardest one to play. Right. Yeah. Like baseball is hard from a mental standpoint, but hockey is hard, just much more physically. Right. Mm-hmm. So. Um, so anyway, I guess my point, my point is, and I don't have to argue. Right. My point is, is that Michigan State losing to Minnesota doesn't it sounds better than it actually or it sounds worse than it actually is. Well, right? and I, what came to mind as you were talking about this was like, yes, I would have loved MSU basketball to walk into Purdue and get a win, but no one was expecting MSU to get that win since Purdue has been playing so well and is seeded number one. So right, I mean, it's it's a, I mean, and the same thing goes. It's like the only thing that stopped Purdue from completely tearing apart Michigan state in the first game was literally home court advantage for Michigan state. And like we explained in the last podcast, home court advantage does not really exist in hockey. I mean, it's like, like Michigan state going to Minnesota would have been hard to do, but Michigan state was all was, was in the second game. I mean, they lost six to three, but they were, it was two to two for a while. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, Mm -hmm. like Michigan state and and Michigan and Minnesota were trading goals for a long time. So Mm -hmm. like I said, it's, it's, it's a lot more, the story is more complicated than it actually is. And this team has come a very long way from where it started. Like Michigan state lost to Notre Dame five zero in the, this was the first big 10 series of the, of the, of the season. They played Mm -hmm. Notre Dame on the road and lost 5-0 in the first game. They have come a long way since then, and I would not be surprised if Michigan State sweeps on this weekend. I do feel like as seasons go on, I think in any sport, people get tunnel vision and they get caught up on like one series or one game, and it's like you got to take a step back and look at the bigger picture of the whole season. And we've talked about this many times, but like this season compared to last season of MSU hockey, you need to really make that comparison, and I feel like then you'll have a better picture of – how things are really going well and and you talk about and you talk about resiliency with this team too like i mean they lost 5-0 against notre dame in the first game of the of their uh series back in in south bend Mm -hmm. and the very next game they tied 1-1 and won the shootout you know what i mean like like um yeah like they've they've done they've been that resilient all all season long and i mean it goes back to um, even I think against Minnesota, I mean, they lost both games, but like, at least they came back out. Right. I mean, they lost those two games two to Minnesota. Then they come back the next weekend and actually win against Michigan. Right. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. they fight hard the next game against Michigan. And then right. in the great lakes invitational, I mean, they lost the first game embarrassingly to Ferris state. Then the next game against Michigan tech, they ended up, I mean, they were winning up until the final minute of that game and then eventually lost in overtime. But, yeah. but like I said, it's, um, it's one of those things. And, uh, I don't know if you go, like you said, compare this to last season, no yeah. chance. Um, bigger I picture did, is always important. Well, and I did want to, uh, throw this around real quick too. Uh, so Michigan state plays Notre Dame this weekend at home and mm-hmm. then they will play Michigan. So actually this weekend, Saturday game is their senior celebration. It's despite okay. it not being the last game of the season. Uh, will you because be there? It, it's the last Saturday game. I will be there. Yeah. And awesome. then they play Michigan the next week, uh, next weekend. They play Michigan at home on Friday and then they play mm-hmm. them in Detroit. On Do you get Saturday. to go and cover the game in Detroit? Um, uh, more than likely. Yes. Okay. Uh, I, my credentials have to be accepted and I don't, uh, obviously there's no season pass for this game. Yeah. Right. right so, right. I Exciting. just have to get accepted, but I hope uh, so. Should be because I think be like don't sometimes the people that cover like sit in that like top thing all the way up, like up yeah, the yeah, ice. yeah, mm. and and um yeah, and it's and the the game is handled by Detroit's like PR guy, so yeah, you know, it's yeah. nothing to do with. Do you need an State. assistant for that game? Because I could, I could be there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Just let me know. Maybe. 
We'll see. Um, but then Michigan State ends the season playing Wisconsin, and hopefully they okay. win both games. So All right. Uh, we will see. We are not yeah. entirely sure. Um, but – Oh, and I wanted to real quick go over the Big Ten standings because, again, like I said, Mm -hmm. Michigan State's picture is not that dire, right? So if you look at the if you look at the Big Ten standings, you have uh, Minnesota at the top, right, with forty three points, right? That's a lot of points. Penn State is in second, tied with Ohio State with twenty seven. Okay, then you have Notre Dame in in fourth with twenty six. Okay, and then you have. I always forget 20... that Notre Dame is in the Big Ten for hockey. Yes, sorry. That always throws sorry. me off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then you have Michigan State and Michigan tied right now at uh, in fifth place with twenty four points, and then Wisconsin all the way at the bottom with nine. You know, Wisconsin I like that only tie. has three. Wisconsin has mm. three Big Ten wins. That's sad for them. Isn't isn't it? <laughs> it is. Yeah, a little bit. But uh, again, like so, like Michigan State right now is they're three points away. If they sweep Notre Dame, they mm-hmm. would have twenty five. What's twenty five? So they would have thirty points and potentially be in second or third place this weekend. That would be a treat. Well, I love the idea that we're tied now, and I know things will change after Notre Dame. But like being tied with Michigan, heading into those games with the home, you know home ice we've talked about this but like possible home ice advantage and then getting to play in in detroit i like that it makes it even more of a you know and that's why the sweep is is so well and 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 college hockey kind of takes that out of it too because you always play two games and it's it's really hard to get a sweep in college hockey so a, Mm -hmm. a, a split is all the more common yeah, uh, especially yeah. when you have in-state rivalries like Michigan. So, yeah, like, we already saw it once this year. For example, if Michigan, if Michigan State did beat Michigan in Detroit, that would be mm-hmm. huge. But yeah. my current prediction is that Michigan State wins the first game and then loses to Michigan in the second mm. game in Detroit. Okay. okay, that is my prediction. But okay. we will see, right? So. But if a sweep does happen, that will be – I mean, this weekend for, for, for Michigan State playing Notre Dame because mm-hmm. Michigan, I believe, if I'm correct, plays Wisconsin. And, okay, again, so should, like we said, Mich- Wisconsin's yeah. bad. But one of Wisconsin's <laughs> wins is against Michigan. Oh. So. I like that. Yeah. So maybe I don't Wisconsin know. will just pull something out of their hat. Something like yeah. that. Out of their but. helmet. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. But I mean, who knows? Who knows? It's it's a long season and the season's almost up, right? It's we got a month left, so mm-hmm. and then the Big 10 tournament and then after that in April is the um or is it March? No, it's it's April. March, April, May. Yeah. So it's in in April is the 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 actual tournament tournament. Yeah, the, okay, where is the Big 10 tournament? Where they, campus sites? Have they released the uh, where is that? Just ev- everywhere. Like oh, so, like sites. It's, uh, yes. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what sorry. you said. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh. So it's just at, all over. Yeah. So like, if you are, if you're the first seed, the way it works is that the first seed gets a bye, okay, mm-hmm. and the second yeah. seed plays number seven at yeah, yeah. their okay. home ice, right? Okay. Number three okay. plays number six. Number three is at home. Number four mm-hmm. plays number five, and number yes. four is at home. Yes. And those are sense. best of best of three elimination. Okay. Okay. So you have to win two games to go on. Okay. And then, which is, again, that's why it what makes it really hard. But yeah. that's, and that's to eliminate like the number seven seed from upsetting number two in one game. Yeah. Right. right because right. number two, if they're mm-hmm. as good as they say they are, should beat number seven handily, at least in, you know, three games at, you know, if it takes yeah. them three games. But, um, and then the, the second, the, well, the semifinals and the finals are both single elimination. Again, at, you know, home ice for yeah, the higher seed. Yeah, yeah, so. And then where is the, like, what's the Frozen Four location this year? Have they released so that? There are, so there are 16 teams yeah. in the NCAA men's tournament. Um, they, the, the Frozen Four itself is in Tampa, which is, is sort funny. of funny to me because mm-hmm. nobody it doesn't have like a, a division one college campus 
uh, yeah. <laughs> in like you're I think it's like a thousand game. miles. You're walking to the game in your shorts and your tank top, and then you have to put a sweatshirt on to go in and watch hockey. That's kind of funny. Well, it's um, well, it's funny. It's funny too because I mean. Tampa Bay, like the where they're playing, the Tampa yeah, Bay right. Lightning are are actually pretty good, right? Yeah, like they won, yeah, yeah. They won t- almost three Stanley Cups in a row, mm-hmm. but um, it's you know it's just I don't know. I just don't understand. I guess funny. it's a nice arena and there's a lot around there, but I don't yeah. understand why it's in Tampa because again, it's not like Tampa. Tampa is not a uh place for college hockey if that makes well, sense. well i mean indianapolis for basketball yes it's a place where there's lots of places that they can host like mm-hmm. you know there's a couple of different arenas or whatever but indian like there isn't a university right there i don't think in indianapolis indiana is in like bloomfield or something right i think right. so yeah, I mean, it's – so – and just to give you an idea of the way that it works, so the regionals um, – so there's 16 teams. So you essentially have, like, I think it's, like, three rounds or so, whatever, mm-hmm. um, are all in uh, – are all on campus sites, actually. Yeah, okay, so, okay. Um, so there's, uh, there's regionals between the dates of March 24th and 26th. Okay. okay. Our twenty third, sorry, March twenty third to twenty sixth are the regionals for the um, uh, tournament. So mm-hmm. the first one, the I well the 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 sites. I'm sorry, is uh, at one's Penn State. Okay. Okay. One is at Penn State, then one is at Yale, right? Mm. And then one is at the University of North Dakota, and then okay. one is at the University of uh, New Hampshire. Okay. Right. And um so the those are your hosts, right? Okay. So okay. um so again, it's it's Pennsylvania and then in Yale's is in uh, campus is in Connecticut and then mm-hmm. you have North Dakota and New Hampshire. But then the okay. the Frozen 4 is being hosted by both the University of Wisconsin um who <laughs> And the Tampa Bay Sports Commission, and they chose Amelie Arena, where the Tampa Bay Isn't Lightning that play. Interesting, the Wisconsin, Wisconsin. Yeah, I know. And then it doesn't Tampa. make any sense. You know, two best vacation spots in the U.S. Wisconsin right. and Florida. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. Well, exactly. Again, it's it's. I mean, it's complicated, right? Like, yeah, and like we'll talk about sense. it more. I just was curious what you know, since you said, oh, sorry, my dog, um, but since you said that that's coming up, I just was curious about locations for that. Yeah, and a lot of it's on like ESPNU and and whatnot. So we'll see. But anything else that you want to talk about today, Brad? No, that's it. Oh, National Signing Day is tomorrow. Today is Tuesday. It's tomorrow, so check out Spartans Illustrated for information about National Signing Day and the exciting news that's coming in for that. We'll have stuff pumping out um, tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, anyone – anyway, thank you for listening and watching. If you are on YouTube, you can listen to the podcast wherever you get your podcasts, Spotify, Apple, Radio Public, Google, Amazon – wherever else you know we even upload to a google drive folder it is a great time you can listen to our podcast once a week every week and visit us on the web at spartansillustrated.com we will see you guys all in the next one bye